Hello everyone. Coming back to have a play with the jewellery kit that is um, part of Dawn's April release. Um, excuse me. Uh, spring bling. And um, I just laid out all the beads so you can just see how many beads we actually get. So there's a gorgeous excuse me a gorgeous assortment of green beads here in various different um uh, patterns so um just more or less try and find one of each pattern yeah so these are the patterns and they're beautiful and they all go so beautifully together so um so what i'm going to do today is make a bracelet with uh, some of these beads and then on another occasion, I'll come back and make the necklace. So for a bracelet, you need between uh, seven and a half and eight inches, depending on the wrist size of the person. And so I've got my bead tray here. And what I propose to do is I'll, I'm going to make it seven and a half. And then we'll put some an extension on it. So in case somebody's wrist is a bit bigger. So I want to do my pattern first and uh, so I'm going to start at the middle here and I'm going to choose this one. So the beauty of this beat, this is that it, um, so I'm going to go this way to seven and a half. No, I'm not. I'm going to go this way. So this is, uh, that's one inch, that's two inches, four inches, six inches, six inches seven inches and a half so in between this line and that line so um let's see what we what we're going to do so um i find quite fancy one of these on either side this is the beauty of these trays because you can you can um uh, lay them out as you want and then it's much easier to um put them together I think I want this blue one. So I'm going to be doing one big one small all the way around. So you can see I've got two inches already. Um, let's put some of these turquoisey ones. Um, why haven't I used these green ones? Uh, I'm going to keep these. There are three green here and three green here which I think I'm going to keep those for, uh, for the necklace. Um, just going to carry on with this. So these two. And we've also got some, some of these faceted ones as well, which are really pretty. But again, I think I'll use those in the necklace. So, um, so I have now on four inches. Um, I could use those very tiny seed beads in here, but I think, well, I've got some bugle beads, a couple. Mm, where's the other one gone? There's a couple of these long ones. These ones, so I might use those. Um... So, um, we're coming up to six inches now. Actually, I think I will use a couple of these. And some more of these. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you know, even for a bracelet, they doesn't have to be symmetrical. But... I'm just going to show. okay, so that is seven inches now, three and a half and three and a half. By the time I get the clasp and everything, that will be seven and a half. So let's get out the wire and let's get started. So don't let go of your wire when you let it get it out of the bag, okay? And I want to measure off about 
I'm going to measure off about 10 inches because uh, you, you want it to be long enough to handle, even though I only want 7 inches. So I'm going to cut it at um, that's 7 inches. And be, remember that this wire um, kinks very easily. So you can see there's a kink here that won't come out. So, you know, you need to hang on to your wire uh, <laughs> for dear life. I would say, oops, um, in order to keep it in a circle so that it doesn't kink. Okay, and then you just pop it back in the bag as quickly as you can um, so that it's there. So, I, so I've got the seven in, I've got my, my wire and I'm going to start off um, by sealing one end. So I'm to pour out a couple of crimp beads there and the collots. So I'll need two of these for the bracelet. Um, a couple. Right. So the first thing you do is you is you um, thread. Let me see. I've already got a kink here. I need my other. Oh, these pliers here, these will do. So I'm just going to snip that off. Right, so you thread the collot onto your wire so that it's not a good start, was it? <laughs> so that the the bottom of it is facing your bracelet, basically. Okay, so that's on. And I'm pulling my th my thing through, and now I'm going to put the the uh, crimping beads on, and it's recommended that you use two crimping beads. I, it's very funny, but when I try to thread beads on camera, I start to shake. Anyway, let's see if we can manage now. There's one and two. Right, it's two. Okay, so then on this this end it's uh, it's a bit easier, but on the other end it's a bit more difficult. So we get our pliers, the flat pliers, okay, and we're going to squash those beads tight. Okay, right, okay, as tight as you can. All right. And then I'm going to pull this into the collot, and you can see that that's not going to go anywhere. So we just close that that end, and that's that's that end done. So now I'm just going to thread my beads on, starting from. I think we're just going to have another couple of these. So starting from there one end and uh, so it's just very easy you just thread your beads on as you go along see like this That's why I decided to do the bracelet because um, otherwise you'd be here all day with me trying to do the um, the necklace. So that the next time I come on, I'll I'll show you. I think I'll show you the the finished necklace, and then I'll show you how to make some earrings with what's left over of the beads. So there is a very generous amount of beads here. Um, Dawn, in fact, made a necklace, a bracelet, and three pairs of earrings. I don't know if she had any beads left over. But you can see, you know, that for your money, you can make a, a, a great... Um, I'm not quite sure where this came out of there. 
a great amount of stuff N nice to give a, as a present or to keep yourself um okay so as i said before when you're doing making jewelry the only tools really that you need are your pliers um you can you, you know you don't need a beading tray although i find them really helpful you can use a piece of felt to put your beads on to stop them rolling away so something like this um uh, that will work perfectly and um yeah so you really with with the, with dawn's kit and the pair and the pl the appropriate pliers which she does have available in her in her shop you're 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 well away and she's given plenty of findings so that's what these bits and pieces are called the collots and the crimp beads and the um jump rings and the clasps so they're all called findings so um so we're nearly at the end of my bracelet and we'll just try it round my wrist to see whether i need to make it any longer i have actually got quite a small wrist but um anyway we'll see right so that's that's that okay so let's just see around my wrist whoops you can see that fits perfectly around oops, around my wrist um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to finish it off with lots of these here we are I'm going to finish it off and then we'll put an extension on it so that for a long for a bigger wrist uh, we've got um a bit of leeway so we want to put another collot now on the end okay and what we don't want is to make, we, we need to make sure that there's some give in this. You don't want to be hand, ha, holding it down like this straight and then, you know, um, without any give in the, in the bracelet because it's a rounded bracelet. I mean, it goes round your arm. You need to make sure that you twist this a little bit and you hold it uh, um, so that there's that give. Otherwise... When you come to put it on, it could break and then all your beads will go everywhere and all your hard work will be wasted. So we're going to put on another couple of crimp beads on the end. Okay. You can see I'm still holding my, my um, bracelet in a loop. Okay, now you need to make, you need to make these uh, crimp beads go as, 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 far down as possible inside your collot okay and then with your pliers to get inside there and squeeze squeeze them okay so that's them squeezed and then i can cut off this excess bit of wire so just be careful when you're cutting wire to cut away from you because um the wire can um, spring, you know, and uh, hit you in the eye or something like that, which we wouldn't want. And then I can just close this up. So there's my bracelet. Okay. See, it fits my wrist perfectly. So now we're going to make the extensions. So, um, okay. So we need... On one end, we need to put the lobster clasp, okay? So we need the jump rings, and these jump rings open uh, in the middle. Because they're oval in shape, the opening is along one of the long sides, so they are actually easier to, to close. And you open the jump ring by going um, back to front, so back to front, not at side to side. So then we pop that in there. So into the jump, into the, make sure you get it through both holes. These collots have got holes on both sides. So you need to make sure you get it through both holes. Yeah. And then we're threading on our lobster clasp. I've got one out, of course I haven't. OK. 
Okay, putting on the lobster class now. Oops. Okay, and with our pliers, we just close the gap. Okay. So you just go backwards and forwards until your gap is closed. So that's one end of the bracelet. And now we're going to do the other end. So I think I'm going to use maybe three, oops, I put my scissors, three of these to make a chain. Okay. So again, we open the, the jump ring back to front. Oops. Okay. We pass the calotte onto there. Okay. Now, if you don't want to make an extension and you just want to have uh, uh, an end to your lobster clasp, you know, to, to it to um, go into, just one jump ring is enough. But as I say, I'm going to put three. So just um, put that one on there and close this. Just backwards and forwards until it's closed. There we are. And see, I'm making a little chain. So we'll do one more. And I'm going to swap hands with the pliers. She says picking up the same pliers with the right hand. Okay. So this is the last one. There we go. So we're going to put, put that on the end of there and close it up. There we are. Um, I've buckled it a bit so we can just straighten it with the pliers and there we are so let's try it on uh, so there's a lobster clasp here I'm not very good at <laughs> excuse me I'm not very good at um, I'll put it on the other row there, there, there are um, certain things that I can do better with my left hand than with my right and then and vice versa. So there we are. So as you can see, it's a bit big for me, um, but that's OK. I've put it on the on the um, furthest away link. So let's try a bit closer. OK. So that's like still a bit big for me because obviously I hadn't taken into consideration when I measured it the the length of the lobster clasp and that. So you've got nearly an inch there, which um, is, is in the way, so to speak. And, you know, you could make a little dangle to put on the end if you want. You know, might do that in the next video, show you how to do that so that you've got something you know hanging down but that's that's the basis of making the bracelet i think it's come out really well it's really pretty all the greens are so perfect and thank you for watching and uh, take care everybody and have a lovely day bye for now